Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. Could they be splitting Disney up? Is that a plan that is viable? Um, apparently, Blackwell's floated out the idea that they want to split the company into three parts. Mm -hmm. uh, so. yeah, or at least they want to yeah, split it into three different things. Yeah, that's what, the, way, the way it sounds. They put out their... Um, official notice that they are going to attempt the proxy fight and they put out a press release which we're going to look at here in a few minutes but a part of that is they want to split some things off in the company yeah i mean that it, it's it's kind of weird but it's also not i mean you look at other companies and they do have separate companies now i thought disney had i guess they're all under the same umbrella but i thought they had like the walt disney travel company and the you know like different different companies but I I, think yeah it's... i mean they do they are separate like you know but then they kind of that's kind of i think they're all still the same one like that's why they have like you know oh, this is like exper parks experiences and that yeah. is one thing and Divisions that's where you get the and... cruise lines and the travel agent yeah. and all that you know what i mean i think yeah. that they're still under the same i just don't know if people are going to be okay with it that i don't think people are going to be okay with i i do believe 100 percent that disney needs change i think they need to get some other people on the board that actually want to change things, change the direction for the better uh, of the company. And Jay Brazula, I think, would be a fantastic choice. Oh, they they piss on him too in this in this. Order. Of course they do. But you know, here's the kicker though: they want they, they say that it's too much for one successor, so they basically want to split it up so they could have more than one person in charge. Yeah, and, but and that's gonna be a problem because look, as a shareholder, I'm gonna look at that and I'm gonna be like, wait a second, so my Disney stock might not be worth as much long term or D disney or as how a company. Are they going to split that up? They yeah. have to split it. Are you going to take the most profitable stuff and spin it off into one division and that's where all the money's being made and then everything else gets like dumped off. They're into... arguing that your stock could be split or you could have three different like if, if you own stock and they split it or whatever. Then you'd be going into three different places or you could have three different so you have three times the chance of making more money. I don't like that because I, I don't think people are going to like. I it. I think what's going to happen then is they're not going to look at Disney as a whole. People investors aren't going to look at Disney as a whole. They're going to be like, okay, well, we're just going to invest in the the park side. We're just going to invest in the streaming side. We're not going to you know all this other crap. And then I could see Disney just being like, yeah, all of our unprofitable crap will throw it into this other division, and let that just burn down. Yeah, which you is know. what they probably do. And yeah. the thing is, like, we've talked before about, you know, oh, they could sell off ABC or whatever. The difference is you're selling it to somebody else or you're selling the company to somebody else and let them oversee it. That's not the same thing as taking the company and splitting it into different parts. Right, right. So, I mean, there's a lot of, I'm sure there's pros and cons to this, but we're going to talk about, we're going to look at what their letter said and what they put out there and what they're offering. Um but before we get into any further, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, so this just kind of popped up today. Now I guess it's uh, what tomorrow is the investor. Tomorrow call? is the investor. Call. Well, it is the it is the it's the the quarter first quarter first of the twenty three twenty four year because it goes from October to January. It's the right. earnings call for that period. Right. So uh, lots of speculation as to what that's going to be about. And then this comes up like the day before. And of course, we did a video yesterday talking about Disney freaking out, trying to make oh, yeah. sure you vote white. Right. Vote oh, white. Oh, to... That's right. Don't vote. Don't vote for blue or green. So Blackwell's, that would be the green card. So this is another group. This isn't Nelson Peltz's group. This is another group that's proposing right. this split. So let's uh, let's check this out and see what's going on here. Okay. So um, Deadline had posted about it. We can go out to the letter here in a minute. Okay. So they're talking about it here and they, they break it down a little bit more. We can look at their letter, but this is actually going to summarize it for us. Blackwell's Capital Today made its fight with Disney official, urging shareholders in a definitive proxy statement to elect its three nominees to the board of directors as the company navigates through a vast and novel opportunity set offering a near limitless, limitless potential. Uh -huh. Meaning, we, if we split up, we could get more. I don't know. The purpose of our campaign is simple. We want to ensure that Disney has the right collection of minds around the boardroom table, working constructively together to make decisions that will benefit all shareholders for decades to come. They're opposed to Nelson Peltz, and they're opposed to the Disney board, and now it's a three-way fight, which the problem with that is you're going to have a three-way split, which is going to dilute you know, like we're a lot of people who are going to side with Disney either way. And there's probably a lot of hedge funds that are going to side with Disney either way, because some yes. of the people that um, are on the board came from those places. So you have that going on. Um, and then you have now the, the other side of it where the investors are angry and you have those people. Now they're going to have to be split in two about who they're going to decide to go with. Yeah. And the, the problem with that, I mean, I'm kind of looking at like, <sighs> look at the, um, 
the election in 1992. I know it's, it's, you gotta get the way back machine. You gotta get in the way back machine. People believe that uh, George Bush lost because Ross Perot, uh, third party candidate, oh, came yeah, into the, that, yeah, he yeah. came into the picture. And they think that he lost mostly because of that, because Perot pulled conservative voters away. And this could happen. This could basically be like everybody's like up in the air about like, yeah, we know Disney needs to change, but we're kind of split on who whose plan we're going to go with. And then meanwhile, Disney wins because, you know, because everybody. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the people that don't, you know, don't pay attention are either not going to vote. They're going to make it hard to vote. Even I was very concerned. And I mentioned it to, to Neon after the video was in in this here. I was a little concerned because the way it reads down here about um, how you vote. OK, if you want to go to or if you want to go to the meeting. OK, yeah. in order to attend the virtual meeting, you must register in advance to go to the meeting. But you have to go to this website and select attend a meeting and you'll need the 16 digit control number on your white notice. You should be able to attend the meeting even if you don't vote for Disney. So that's a little confusing because basically it reads like you want to attend the meeting. You have to the notice is on the white card. Use the white card number so that we get the vote. Yeah, I thought that was a little bit skeezy. But um, back to what we're talking about here. So, yeah, it, it, I think it's going to be divisive. I think that – well, I know a lot of – they're waiting to see what happens at the meeting tomorrow. So tomorrow yeah. is the investor call. A lot of people are on the fence, a lot of shareholders. I think they're waiting to see the results of the investor call tomorrow. Now, it's all going to also depend on how Disney spins it because Disney's really, really good at, at spinning it like it's doing great even though you know, the sky is literally falling around them. So I'm sure they're going to try to spin it in a positive, even if it's negative. Um, but they're waiting to see because that's what a lot of people are waiting to see. What how it's going? Is the company getting better? Yeah, I would. I wouldn't go by one, one report because it's been consistently not doing great. B well, that's the thing. That's what they're kind of looking at. What they're going to talk about tomorrow, and, and I guess one of the, the the big things people are looking for. You know, does Disney have a plan? Like, because you look at the immediate future, and it's like, okay, we're well, going to the building phase now. Just disregard everything that came. But that's before. gonna take ten years. It's the building phase. Next year, Epic Universe opens, and it looks freaking awesome. Disney does not have time to play catch up, short of them opening a whole other gate, which mm -hmm. they can't do. And it takes them five years to build a roller coaster. How the hell are they going to compete with Universal? Well, they're going to give a new country bear show with oh, okay. the IP songs and throw a new Tree of Life projection show up. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's gonna that's gonna beat Nintendo. That's gonna beat mm -hmm. Harry Potter. Right. Sure, sure it is. And you know how to train Train Dragon, which has a movie coming out next year. Yes, yeah. you know, um, it looks like they're playing you know chess, and Disney's caught with his pants down. Anyway, not that's how you play chess, but you know what I mean. Well, so, uh, sometimes maybe some people play chess that way. So, um, King me. They're oh, that's <laughs> that's checkers. checkers. So they're talking about the different uh, the people they have that want to put in Jessica Shell, which was you know from Universal, Craig Hatkoff, Leah Sullivan, and they're talking about they each have a different uh, specific sector that they they specialize in. Hatkoff is a real estate executive, extends to exploring all strategic possibilities with cold eyes, including the potential separation of Disney into three entities, beginning with a management reorganization yeah. and leadership selection for each business and resulting in standalone public companies. So they want to take Disney split into three standalone public companies, each with their own leadership. I think that's a terrible idea. I think I think that's too much too fast. I think that's a terrible idea. I think that uh, Disney would be better off selling assets that they clearly cannot manage to people who actually could manage them mm -hmm. and then paring the company down and focusing on, you know, let's be the best Disney we can be. Let's well, go back to being the best animation studio, the best uh, theme park provider yeah. what's funny to me though is they have three nominees for the board they want to split into three companies three different groups and each one has its own specialization that that just happens to focus on the three things they think disney needs to be become yeah. i'm just like yeah okay disney may simply be too complex for anyone's successor to <laughs> mr Iger to manage holistically well like you said then if it's too big sell off some chunks of it and then use the money to put back into it yeah yeah, that, you know? that would be the smartest thing. Like, you can't, obviously, you can't do Star Wars. Obviously, you can't do Marvel. You don't know what you're doing with the Fox. Oh, stuff. they're not going to get rid of those because they use those in their parks. For merchandise, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, there are other no things. for their parks. Yeah, uh, but the, 
But they can make a deal. Like if they would sell that stuff off, they could still make a deal that they get the theme park rights. They're never going to sell those off. They're they're not going to because they would lose too much. It would be too, it would hinder them too much to sell those off. They're gonna look at other things they can spin off, but that's not gonna be those aren't gonna be one of them. I guarantee Marvel I, and, and Star Wars I, and Lucasfilm are not gonna be two they sell off. I think that that is the only thing that could save those companies. Sell them up, it's back to the Hansons then. You know, do something. Well, that's not gonna do enough. But I'm just saying, but no, I'm just two, saying like they're I mean, gonna hold on to that with everything they got. But that's the only stuff that they have that has any any like if they're going down, value. those IP are going down with them. They you know, kind of thing. Uh, um yeah, it has the only thing that has value, so they're not gonna let go of it. It's also floated the idea of Disney separating its owned real estate, which it says represents about 44% of its market cap at cost into an independent publicly listed REIT or a series of investment vehicles in which the shares, cash, and or interest could be distributed to shareholders. Oh, God. <laughs> See, like we're, we're trying, says that, you know, they, they, wanna, they want things to do better and they want like to do better, the parks to do better and they want to do like the streaming to do better. They're, they're coming in. They're like, we need to split this all thing up and get more money. If we have right, three, more ba money. basically they're looking at this like if we have three Disney's, we'll make three times as much money. Not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Especially because the parks usually were, was what made up for like their movies not doing yeah. well and things like that. That, so, that. that was one of the, I mean, that was one of the things that worked about Disney was because they were multifaceted. If one air historically, if one area was not doing well, the other area picked up the slack. Mm -hmm. The problem is all of their cylinders are broke. They're not mm -hmm. firing on any cylinders right now. Mm -mm. So there is no slack being Plus picked up. Plus they've added too many cylinders. Yes. You know, there's yeah. just too much they've added. Um, every time they think that they need a challenge, we start, we start to, well, let's add another challenge. Okay, so here's the letter that they sent out, or the press release. Now we'll get to the letter. The press release came out, and they're saying, you know, their their nominations. They're saying Jessica Schell, Craig Hatkoff, and Leah Sullivan bring invaluable expertise and experience to Disney's board as it faces the challenges and opportunities of a generational transformation. That they want to push through. Yeah. Voting the Blackwell's nominees will ensure the board has the support it requires across critical areas, media and content, real estate and asset optimization, and proficiency to guide Disney through a new world where physical, spatial, computing, and AI-driven experience converge. Each one of these people for each one of these things, and they want three companies, and there's three things. I yeah, mean... That's weird. Um, it's, you know, it's not weird. It's, you can see where this is going. Yeah, Shell is the one that came from uh, Universal and Warner Brothers, I think. So she actually does have experience, but it sounds like... I don't know. You're talking about like turning Disney into like a real estate and a tech company and a the media company. And I, that, it's just, it, it sounds like a cluster. Each one of those need, need infrastructure and everything else. I just think that that, that could not happen anytime soon. If so, it's even possible. Plus these are just three seats on the whole board. Not, they can't just determine this because they say so. Right. But then beyond that, like you thought it was confusing to shareholders to get them to vote white. Try explaining to them, we're going to take Disney and we're going to split it up into three parts. And this part's going to do this. And this part's going to do that. And this person's going to be in charge of this. And th they're going to be like, what? That That's stupid. They have one point they make later that I do agree with them on. But I'm thinking this is too much. Yeah, I mean, I too think much too soon. And I think if the company's already in a precarious position. You do this and make extreme changes that quickly. You're going to collapse it from the inside. But beyond that. Again, I, I would say the same thing with the Triangle Group partners. There are only two seats. These are only three seats on the board where they can they can be part of the board. They don't get to dictate. So no matter what everybody promises, they're just, it's, what the end result is going to be if any of these people get on the board is going to be they get a couple seats on the board so they have a voice in the conversation and they can try to, to you know talk people into agreeing with them. But that's still only a fraction of the board. They don't control everything. And Iger is still going to control all his friends. They're right. probably going for the ones that are the most, like I think the ones that have the most connection to Iger they take them out of play, then he, those are some of the people he, that he depends on the control. He can get them out of the way. Uh, but either way, it's still going to be a fraction of the board. So they, they, uh, they, yeah, they totally dunked on uh, Pelts and Rizzullo. Oh yeah, they do up here. They said, uh, the board lacks qualifications that our candidates possess. The try and nominees for their part are uninspiring. Mr. Rizzullo was a former Disney employee who, pl who plainly lacks relevant expertise. He was the CEO. I know. Uh, oh, I can't. Unlike, that. you know, the real estate dude, Mr. <sighs> Peltz has spent the last two years begging Disney for a board seat and seems to focus his, what's well, not even a year, focus his efforts on soliciting endorsements from Elon Musk, who doesn't own a single Disney share. Don't know what he owns because I don't know. I don't look, look I don't see the portfolios of everyone, so I don't know. But I'm sure it's out there somewhere. 
But Rizzullo was, but they were making it out like Rizzullo was like mopping the floors I or know, something right? at Disney. He was the CFO under Eisner, and and he was actually next in line to be the CEO of the company. Well, they're gonna we're gonna talk about what why their people are the best. Okay, we're gonna get there. Oh, in a minute. Okay. So they're talking about the letter, and I'm not gonna read the whole part because the beginning of part was just you know what we already talked about. Here they said, if elected, our three nominees for the board have pledged to continue to support Disney's transformation efforts under the leadership of the current board and Iger. Basically, if elected, our nominees you know, promise to go along with the board and Iger. So what I'm getting, what I'm getting from this is don't vote white and don't vote where are they green. Blackwell's is green. Don't vote right, green. green. Because, because oh, yeah, because blue. basically they're saying we're just going to we want to get on the board and we want to split the company in three parts, but we're going to go along with Iger and the board. How can you do both? Yeah. How can you come in and make you're promising to change and promising to divide the company up and all that? Yeah. If you're admitting that you're just going to go along with the leadership of the current board and Iger, I don't understand. In addition to an approach of constructive collaboration, our three nominees will bring unique skills, expertise, and perspectives to the board that draw on a range of experiences that the future of Disney depends on. <laughs> Media and content, real estate and strategic asset review, and Disney's physical, spatial, AI crap, okay? Right. And here we're going to talk about how each one of these people are that, that person. Media and content. That they said that Disney has the preeminent media company in the world, but they lagged in adding meaningful media expert expertise to its board. And they said they list only two non-executive directors on a board of 12 individuals that have significant media experience. Disney did not even have a skill set marked for media experience. But that's okay because our nominee, Jessica Schell, is one of America's preeminent experts in content monetization. It would be a valuable addition to the board. 20 years in strategic and operating roles at three major entertainment companies, Warner Brothers, NBC, and Walt Disney, focusing on impact of technology change and content distribution and monetization. And then she was the executive VP and general manager of Warner Brothers and her home entertainment. And she did DVDs, which they don't even make most of the time anymore and they're trying to get rid of yeah she led warner brothers top entertainment demand. franchise to market enabled new technologies virtual reality internet of things connected entertainment devices nfts and wow you're really selling me now and how is warner brothers doing i know and, and just, and <laughs> nfts um i'm not i mean look i'm not trying to make fun i think she would probably be a good person to have on the board if i'm not if i'm being honest uh, yeah but i'm like it's like oh she'll, she'll know what to do in the boardroom on day one i'm like and jay rizzullo who worked for the company when it was a much more prosperous and, and more focused and was disney and was disney he uh he wouldn't. He wouldn't know. So they said that her um, expertise will contribute insight on day one, like you said. Yeah. We believe there's no better suited person for the rest of the board of management to leverage as Disney navigates the complex issues of integrating Hulu and Disney Plus and the unbundling and transitioning of ESPN to a DTC service and doubles down on producing extraordinary content, blah, 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 blah. And it well, goes on. You have any money, you can't produce extraordinary content, can you? No. And then this is, this is they said her contribute contributions will help Disney attain Netflix like growth rates. I don't I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see how Disney can. They can't. They and, can't. And not by the end of this year. That, attain Netflix level growth rates. Nobody else can either cuz Netflix no. is Netflix and you all are just you know coming in after the fact. Years too late. Yeah, they're they're well and Netflix has the benefit of, you know, they yeah, they had years ahead and they also were using everybody else's content to build up their platform. Disney honestly, my personal opinion this is my personal my personal opinion is Disney should get the hell out of the streaming game and they should focus on making the best damn content they can and then giving it to the or selling it to the highest bidder, whether it's Netflix or somebody else, if they want to be the ones to take the chance on the streaming platform. You're like, fine, we'll put our content on Netflix. We'll make a very lucrative deal. You you deal with all the infrastructure and all the headaches and all the whatever of that because we're losing money on streaming and we'll just make really good shows for you and we'll put Mandalorian or whatever on Netflix. Well, this is their, their projection here and they're like going about Netflix. Is, but in 2027, Netflix is still number one and ESPN still this little blip. I don't know. Anyway. I think it's stupid. Real estate stupid. and strategic asset review. Okay, now here comes the other guy. Disney's real estate is also the potential source of long duration capital to address balance sheet income statement challenges and opportunities. Basically, we can use the real estate to offset losses. So we have Craig Hatkoff, who is a real estate and capital's marketing real estate and capital marketing experience, providing valuable to the board in evaluating and implementing unique world-class hotel and hospitality real estate investments. 
He said the last 13 years, he was independent director of SL Green, Manhattan's largest office landlord. And they're like, and he, he could look at it from with cold eyes, like, like in fresh new eyes. And he's going to look at it. And he's going to see what they need to do. And they can make more money that way if they split off their real estate. And then we got the Disney's physical, spatial, computing, and AI-driven experiences. And now this is by the other person. Because Disney is arguably the greatest opportunity to set any media company in the world as it pertains to AR, VR, given its breadth of media content. Imagine a Disney World where you could have a lightsaber spar with a Jedi on Tatooine. Or team up with Simba to traverse the African plains. So, screens. Yeah, they, right. That's the ride. You know, here's the thing. This stuff here, why are people going to pay to come to your park when you could just use VR headset and do it anyway? I, you know, I'm sitting here thinking like, yeah, that's great, except uh, they don't have Tatooine in Disney World. <laughs> that's true. Well, no, no, they're saying with your VR. Oh, okay. AR, so that's augmented how, reality and virtual reality. So that's how we, that, well, I thought it was like you walk into Galaxy's Edge and you can, you know, use your augmented reality That's probably what device. they're meaning. But I'm like... There is no tattooing in Galaxy's no, Edge. No, and they can save money because they can be like, hey, you don't like Batu? Well, we'll just skin it on your device to look like tattooing. There you go. Well, here's the it's kicker, cheaper. though. Here's the thing, though. There's no place you can traverse the African plains with Simba, though. Unless you're like, oh, well, look, we're on that. We're on the parking lot. No, I was going to say, look, we're on the safari. And instead of looking at real animals, just slap your VR headset on. Now you can see the cartoon animals and the IP animals. We don't even need to pay for those real don't animals. Don't give them ideas. And we don't even need to do conservation efforts. Because, I mean, one thing I'll give Disney oh, is they have been doing ideas. a lot to save animals. That's one thing I really, really, really like about Disney is that, and I, I support, is that they've gone out of their way to do um, – different things, working with different other groups to save and restore animal populations, save animals. So what are you going to do? Get on the safari, put your head, your, your things on the safari guys to be like, and if you look to your right, now you can see Simba. Hi Simba. And everybody's looking out the window with their VR headset and there's like Simba. And then you're not seeing the Simba sitting with the other lions, but you're not seeing them. Cause all you see is fucking Simba. There's oh a my God. <laughs> Calm on there. I'm sure you can see the lions doing that too if you hit the right day. Well, no, they won't have any lions. They're too expensive. Um, yeah, they they, <laughs> they, they need fed. They need. We can take the, an, the the area we house animals and have the people work on conservation efforts and use it to make another expansion. Another with DVC. more IP. A DVC. A DVC. Yeah. We'll turn it into a DVC. We'll we'll just take the aquarium. We don't need a DVC. Uh, just give them a trailer and put your VR headset on. Just never take it off. Now you're in the the most uh, you know luxe hotel room on property you're just in a trailer oh my god it's it, it's gonna be ready player one and i was thinking they stack them up like you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah there you go. go to the value resort it's just a trailer with a ar headset so and, here oh here leah sullivan has built her career on imagining and creating <sighs> she is precisely the candidate the board needs to continue imagining the future of disney as we navigate a world that sees Physical, digital, and virtual worlds converging. Again, if you have digital and virtual versions and you have the thing at home, you don't need to go. The yeah. point of going is to see the architecture, to actually experience the attractions. If it's just going to be all VR, and it's fun to go on a couple rides where you wear the headsets and it's like makes it 3D or VR and you're like, it's one attraction. To do the whole park like that would seem kind of a waste of yeah. space. Like, why would you do that? It's like, you're, that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, if you're offering that kind of stuff for people at home to go to the, visit the parks at any given time, you can go visit the parks that day or, and you could be using your headset to do it. That, that would probably do well, but using them all the time in the parks, it's going to be, people are going to see that as a cheap ass, you know, it's like screens everywhere. It's considered cheap. They're not going to like it. Um, not for the price you're paying. So they're talking about she's always in the AR and VR trends at general partner at Fuel Capital. She's surrounded by AR and VR spatial computing technologies. Prior to that, she was a task grab at Inc. where she founded it. Okay. And sold to IKEA. Oh God, that's so I know, right? So here we go. There's three things that Disney to do. Three ways we have to split them up, and we have three nominees that we are not at all telling you we need to be in charge of it. When we say we need to focus on new leadership for each of those divisions. Are they, is this, I, I mean, are they in cahoots with Disney? Because I'm like, this is not going to fly. This is not going to fly. I think getting. I don't think so because Iger and them wouldn't want to split it all up. Yeah, but it's so ridiculous that they know nobody's going to vote for it. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't imagine anybody vote for this. It's, it's, it's stupid. It's a stupid idea. I just, Disney needs to pair down. They need to stop buying everything. They can't manage what they have, but splitting it up into three different companies is stupid. It's a stupid, stupid idea. Well, here they're talking about, okay, so Blackwells has been vocal in a support of Disney board. 
So you you're 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 in support of the shit that's been going down. You're just basically said we've been vocal in this board. That's what I said. We yeah. want to we want to replace three people. Yeah. Okay? However, but we're going to leave Iger in charge. Yeah. However, the yeah. board can benefit from critical experience and expertise that our nominees exclusively represent. That, that would happen to be in charge of the three places you split it. The board today has an abundance of former large company CEOs and executives from industries such as automobile manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, banking, etc. But only one entrepreneur founder, Amy Chang. You know, but we need somebody here that worked at Fuel Capital instead. It, given even a gifted leader like Mr. Iger requires oversight and accountability. You know, if there had been oversight and accountability on Iger a few years ago, I know, right? The company would probably wouldn't be in the position it's in yeah. now. The current Disney board is especially reliant on management's expertise and assurances about the company's strategy and execution. The board has also struggled with succession. There, there hasn't been succession. There hasn't been anything. You brought Dan Iger back, you know? Well, I, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, Pelts will hold Iger's feet to the fire. There will be accountability. And Rizzullo will be the successor as the CEO <laughs> That's of what Disney. they want. But that's what they said. Yeah. They want these three guys to be. These, yeah. uh, sorry, three people. I usually use guys as a gender neutral term, just FYI. You're allowed to. I do. I got in trouble for that when I was when I teach. Like I had a, the only thing oh that my the, my supervisor found was I'd say, hey, guys. And I went to say guys and girls. Oh, my God. I just like to say guys because it's, it's now you can't say either. No, you have to be it's like, all problematic. Hey y'all, hey y'all. The board has also okay struggles with section. Okay, well, uh, they're talking about the haphazard exit of Mr. Chapek as CEO. But to be fair, I don't think Mr. Chapek was the right choice to begin with. However, I also think that Bob Chapek kind of got. You know, he kind of got sabotaged, and I think Iger was one of the ones who did so, and the board itself. Um, Recent concerns surrounding any informa and information sharing. Okay, this is where I agree. This is where I agree. Okay, before I let me explain this before I read this. So Value Act was the other place that looked like they were going to try to do a proxy battle before Blackwell showed up. Okay, and then instead they said, "Oh, we're going to work with Disney and we're going to make it." We, we they, Disney signed an agreement with them to help them to do better. But now basically Value Act gets access that other people don't get is what they're complaining about. So they said. Recent concerns surrounding an information sharing agreement between Disney and Value Act, who is another, you know, like they're like, you know, Blackwells or Trying Group, they have investors and stuff, are proof positive that independent and new perspectives are necessary. Disney's share price suffers from significant information discount, as recently noted by several key market analysis. Showering one shareholder with information that is withheld from the other shareholders will only make matters worse. I do agree with them on this point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they make a deal with one place that's a shareholder and like, you know, a, place, a group that, that represents a lot of different people with Disney stock and they don't give it the same access to everybody else. It's going to cause a problem. And it could be, it, it's looked at, you know, as a, a conflict of interest. I do agree with them on that one. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I just, I don't know. I feel like this is, if the goal is to get new blood on the board and the goal is to, oversee Iger, I think throwing something this extreme out there is, is not, is not going to work. Mm -hmm. It's actually going to, it's actually going to hurt the chances to, to affect any change. What will happen is people will be like, Oh, that's complicated. And uh, whatever, let's just vote white. You know, this yeah, sounds... I think it's going to happen. Yeah. I think it's just going to drive them to, the, to vote white. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're basically saying they want to ensure that shareholders or that the, that the value acts agreement is terminated and they're all given the same information. So I agree with them there. That's the one point I think they actually have. Everything else is just, and they go on about vote withhold for the try and nominees and yeah, blah, see, blah, blah, blah. If, if we they go. were the working end. together, if Blackwells and Tryon were working together, it would be a totally different story. It'd be like, yeah, okay, we're going to work together. We're going to get Jay Rizzullo and uh, Nelson Peltz. Maybe we'll get another seat in there for Jessica Schell or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That would make sense. Like, oh my God. But now it's like, okay, yeah, these guys are fighting with each other. Which makes it more, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm looking at this now, and, and this is such a ridiculous proposition that I think it's actually, you, you've you just sealed the deal that Disney is going to continue Disney's as is. Involved, you know, involved with it, which yeah. we don't know. I, I don't know. It saying. sounds so ridiculous. Like, throw some, make it look like you're trying. Throw out some well, ridiculous thing that nobody's going to vote for, but you look like you're actually trying, and that's actually going to get more white votes. So here... Here's the thing that I think is the bigger takeaway from all of this is the fact that we had Value Act was threatening to do something and then just join forces with Disney. Yeah. You have Blackwell's Capital and you have Try and Partners. There's three different groups, well, two now, that are coming out 
against the current board, which tells me that shareholders in general are tired of the current board and they're tired yeah. of the issues. And you know what? People aren't just brushing it off anymore like they used to. Like it's actually taking notice um, because people, it's not just one group threatening. Now we have another group coming in too because at the end of the day, they none of them think it's going right the way it is. They all have different plans for how to fix it. Again, I want to point out that's only two seats or three seats. That doesn't that you just because they promise they want to do something on either one of them doesn't mean that they're going to have the power to do everything they promise because they're going to be you know on a board diluted with other voices on the board, and some of the which Iger kind of has control over. So you know. But the, the fact of the matter is there's all these different groups that wanted to take it to a proxy war standpoint. They're all declaring proxy war on Disney because as it is, it's not working. No. And that's across, you know, these all these shareholder groups. So it's, it's, it's not just, you know, us saying Disney's fucking up. Now they're out there saying Disney's fucking up mm -hmm. too. And I'm just like, yeah, it took you guys long enough. But, you know, here they are. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, I, look, I, personally, I think Disney has to change, but now I'm even less sure that they're going to change because I, I think this might this might actually complicate well, I think things. this is going to complicate. I think it's going to take yep. away from trying. Yep. And I mean, they're like, you're just like, like trying. Like, look, I, to be, I'm going to be honest with you. Nelson Peltz, I think, is a big mouth. But, um, but I, that doesn't negate the fact that he has experience. And I understand that. And he has some valid points, especially involving this Disney, Disney Plus, Disney streaming, and ESPN and stuff. Um, I think Jay Rizzullo is the best choice for the board, if yeah. I'm going to be completely honest. Yeah. I even think that um, the, the girl from uh, Universal is, is a good fit for the board. Yeah, and I not think understanding some of these other people. I think you're really reaching on them. But like, I, I wish you could pick like one person from here and one person from there, two people from here, one person, you know what I mean? And do that, but they won't, you can't do that, I don't think. But I would wish you could. You only can vote by the card. Yeah. Um, because I think there's a couple of people that are good that I think would work with other people well if put in the position. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I just- I'd I, vote blue. I'm just gonna tell you straight up. When I vote, it's gonna be blue. I, I think it. I think at this point, like I'm, I'm not. I'm not holding my breath. I, I actually had some hope. I thought, well, maybe, maybe then get Pelts and Rizzullo in there. Maybe we can get Rizzullo as as CEO. Uh, get some accountability for Iger. Maybe they actually will turn it around. But but now that we've got you know these two guys, well, they're just saying like, we're just going to work with the board and Iger. Yeah, and it's, I'm like I, because I, why? They're they're. Yeah. They've done such a great job. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to yeah. wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.